Hey, welcome back to another Rogue Tech short. Uh, this time I am just going to talk a little bit about the opening of Rogue Tech and how to start the game. Um, most people who play this for the first time, and I know w especially with me, get extremely frustrated with the game compared to the original Battletech. Um, so I want to take you through uh, a new campaign. Now you can just run the standard campaign um, or you can go into custom. If you find the standard campaign is too hard, there's a few things in the custom campaign that you might um, want to adjust. Now, the top here is for the original Biotech. What you're looking at is what's underneath it here. So parts for mech assembly, if you want to make it easier, you can move it down to three. I generally run with eight um, because I like a challenge, but you can lower your mech parts for assembly down to three, and it may, it'll make it a lot easier in acquiring new mechs mech recovery chance, you can crank that up to 100%, meaning if you lose a mech in battle, um, you actually will get it back at the end of the mission, whereas if it's lower, um, let's say down around 30%, you might not get it back, w in which case you're going to have to choose the components from the mech that still survive from in your loot table at the end of the battle, which can be a problem. Enemy force strength, you can change <laughs> You can change it to, you know, don't hurt me or very easy if you want. If you leave it on normal, it's actually not that bad. Um, I've tried it on hard. It's actually really fun on hard. Um, you got to play the game a lot slower, but I've never gone beyond that. And I'm sure, you know, good players can <laughs> go right up to spank me, but uh, I'm not that way. Um, your starter mech, um, choosing a starter mech, um, you can choose a Thunderbolt, like a bigger mech. Um, and I haven't really played around with this too much, but the Butcher is actually not a bad starting mech. Uh, it's 45 tons, um, and you can do a lot with it. So, and if you like lighter mechs, Wolfhounds are good too. Uh, but like I said, you can just, you know, you can cheat, and I got an Atlas one time, an Atlas and five spiders. But um, you can change that and choose your own mech if you'd like. Contract variance difficulty, this is... Uh, the variance in half skull of the missions that are created. So two is actually pretty good, which means if you're a one skull lance, you can get anywhere from one half to a two skull mission show up in the actual mission um, uh, contract um, chances. Um, anything beyond that generally won't show up. Um, so it'll give you a lot of lower level missions. You can reduce this to one so you can find, get a lot of missions around your level if you want. I usually play around three or four um, because if you've got, I, I mean really it's based on the value of your max. So if you've got a really good like medium max or light max, y you might want to do missions that are like two skulls higher than what your lance weight is, um, knowing that you can actually survive it. So just think about that when you're doing it too. Uh, contract payment, you can increase the payment if you find it's too hard. You can increase your commander experience points to 10,000. Normally I do increase it to 10,000 only because the commander should probably have more experience than the rest of the team. That's the only reason why I do it. Um, advanced mech warriors, this is uh, when you're in the um, hiring hall, um, how often advanced mech warriors will show up. But really the other things you need to look at, I think, uh, more so is MechWarrior Progression, MechWarrior Exponent, and MechWarrior Multiplier. These are all on slow because this game is designed to take a while to get up to to speed. Um, you can make this fast, which means your MechWarriors will level up faster. So you'll have a better chance of survival. Lethality, you can lower that down. Um, and this is for uh, pilot hits if the pilot gets killed in action or not. Um, starting money, you can crank it up if you want um, and have a fair bit, or you can lower it if you want. 250,000 is actually pretty good for starting cash. Uh, mech base speed, you can make it faster, slower, whatever. Armor, um, armor speed, you can make it quicker or slower to install armor on your mechs. And just go through it. I mean, you can adjust these basically how you want. Um, just going to start the game here real quick. Okay, so here we are in the Mech uh, Warrior Generation screen. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go through this um, because I really want to get into the game. It doesn't really matter where you come from. Um, I usually go deep periphery just for story's sake. Um, and we're just going to continue through here. Um, now each of these, of course, gives you bonus in piloting or tactics, guts, whatever, right? 
Um, I always choose to be exiled, get gunnery and tactics. Um, but it can be anything you struck out on your own pulling tactics. A lot of people like to stack gunnery uh, in this game, and I, my suggestion is if you don't care about your storyline of your character, feel free to go ahead and do that. But I find with the experience, you can only get gunnery to a certain level anyway. So whether you stack gunnery or not, it doesn't really matter. Once you spend your experience points, you're going to have the same level of gunnery, regardless if you chose it at the beginning or not. So that's at least how I've played. So I just choose generally what I like um, for storyline's sake, um, and then just go right into the game. And then we can just choose, I'm oh, just going to choose uh, <laughs> Cool Yang here for now. We're just going to randomize everything here, and we're going to go right into the game. Welcome, Commander. Welcome, Commander. So here's our stats. Gunnery 3, Piloting 2, Tactics 4, Guts guts 2. So starting off, there's no real right way to start off and wrong way to start off. But I will tell you, if you're not used to rogue tech, um, one of the first things you want to really Check do is have a look at your mech bay. Pretty great, right? Um, because you're going to be starting off with different mechs than what you're used to. Sometimes you'll have five, sometimes you'll have four. Uh, we've got one light and three medium mechs here. But my biggest suggestion um, for this is don't feel like you have to jump into battle right away with the mechs that you have. Go through each of your mechs, right? Have a look at what they have. Um, and like in this case, you know, these mechs are pretty stock and they're pretty boring. Um, but some of them you might find have ferro ferrofibrous armor, um, you know, light engine, and you may want to shift around. Even though some of them might have a double heatsink kit engine, uh, in which case you might want to shift the engine from one mech to another. Spend time looking at the mechs that you've got, look at the gear that you've got, and you may want to change the configurations around. Um, I find with me, I don't use jump jets a lot, and if you find that you're dying a whole bunch um, and you're having a hard time, what you might want to just do is pull out the jump jets. So for instance, in the sake of this Panther, that's two tons that we can add to armor, right? So now you can crank up the armor for higher survivability, all right? And that's almost maxed the armor out right now. Like, I mean, we're down a slight bit, but we've almost maxed out our armor. Once again, giving you a bit more survivability. Now, this is a double heat sink kit engine. Do we really need it on this mech? That's a question you need to ask yourself, right? Do you want to keep the haywire here, or do you want to pull it out and put an SRM or something in? Now, generally when you start the game, you don't have a lot of gear here. You do actually have more equipment than this, but for some reason, I don't know if they fixed it in later patches, but in this particular patch, uh, it doesn't show up right away. Um, which is kind of weird, um, but that is just the way it is. There is a, there are, you do have a few more items, like generally, I think there's like one thing of endo steel in there or something along that lines. Um, so that's one thing you want to consider is how you want to load out your mechs. Feel free to take the time to pull stuff off one mech and put it on another. You got, you know, 2.2 million here. You've got plenty of time to a couple of months even if you want to readjust your mechs to the your play style okay you don't feel don't feel feel like you have to jump into battle right away the second thing i want to talk about is the barracks so you'll start off with a whole bunch of mech warriors here okay so you can see how many guys we've got now depending on your play style once again you know you may not want to have all these pilots i'm a half decent player i'm not the best in the world um, but generally what i do is i go through them all and find out what their base salary is, how much you're paying per month. So right now we we're, we're paying out 343,800 every month or every month to be able to just keep functioning. So you can go through your mech warriors and find out how much they're costing you each month, right? So if you're worried about your monthly payments, like this guy's 43,200, right? Is he any better than anybody else? No, he's not. It doesn't matter. So if you if you I mean once again, for role player, for if you like the guy, you know, feel free to keep him. But feel free too to dismiss some of these pilots that, you know, I know Medusa here, forty thousand, right? So I usually dismiss um, 
three or four of them right off the bat. You know, Decker, 32,000. This guy is, what, 33,600. Let's get rid of him. Uh, and this guy was 23. So with five pilots now, we're down to 226,000. So we've saved over 100,000 sea bills a month just by getting rid of some of the pilots. Um, now, in the in the the games I've been playing now, because these guys start off with half decent skills, I've actually been getting rid of everybody um, and been going to the hiring hall and just hiring the lowest level, like like this, like 13,200 a month. Not very good skills, but I've been hiring lower level people um, just to make it even more challenging for myself. Um, so yeah, and so that's one thing you can do is, like I said, just get rid of a few of the mech warriors that are costing you a lot of money. Um, so let's have a look here. So we got 10,000 XP. Um, and like I said, you can't really get beyond, you know, Gunnery 5. Even if you started off with Gunnery 4, um, with 10,000 XP you can. You can get to Gunnery 6, but it's not going to make that much of a difference. Um, so you can have 4s in all your skill and 5 in Gunnery, which is what I did. So, you know, you start off with half decent stats. And that'll be more than any of these other guys can start off with, right? See how we've already gone past. Um, so yeah, it's it is you know it is what it is. You're not going to be able to um, yes, Commander. really get better than what you've better than that, right? You might be able to, but like I said, squeezing out one extra point of gunnery is not going to make that big a deal. You really want to just get the the uh, multi-target. Um, and then in the command center, if we have a real quick look at that, um, when you start off, the contracts you kind of want to try and get, um, you'll find that the contract pages, once you load um, in for the first time, in each planet you go to, it'll be a little slower. So if you just click off it real quick and then come back to the command center, it'll populate with more um, contracts than what was originally there. So yeah, you can see here there's a lot more. So, you know, we chose two skull. So everything is going to be, or sorry, two. So everything is going to be within one skull distance of what our level is. So you can notice here everything is between half a skull and two skulls. So there's tons of missions here that you can actually do if you wish. But like I said, once again, don't feel like you have to start them right away. Unless you want to just jump right in, go ahead. But I usually take the time to sort out my pilots, sort out my mech bay, make sure I'm comfortable with the mechs that I'm going into battle with, um, and their loadouts, and I'm comfortable with um, the kind of tactics that I'm prepared to use for them. Um, you may want to pull off the LRMs and put in lasers. You may want to pull off lasers and put in LRMs. Depends on how you want to play, right? So you just have to consider all that. Um, but yeah, that's about it for now. Um, and you know, it, Hello, one last thing too, though, in the star map, um, when you're playing, um, if you want to maximize the cash that you can get, what you want to do is find a bunch of planets that are relatively close together that have a short, as short a distance time travel time between them as possible. So it's, I mean, these are these are long distance travels, right? So if I click here, it says it's 43 days to get there. But if I click in the p planet beyond, it's a double jump, but it's only 27 days, which means this planet is a really far distance from its jump point. So what you want to do is find planets that have that are really really close to their jump points, so you can get like a 10 day or 11 day um, jump distance between them. So you can go to at least two systems a month um, and try and find the best contracts that you can get. Um, my suggestion when you're just starting out, um, I found the best contracts um, aren't necessarily one with the most money. Um, what you want to find are things like deniable destruction, uh, where you're destroying a base, because generally there's only one lance of mechs, which you can pull away from the base and kill, and then it's just turrets and you kill the turrets and you finish the mission off. So those kinds of missions will get you experience, and they'll be very relatively easy to play. Um, things like mopping up where you're it's a battle in the highlands you may end up facing more than just one lance 
You may like you may end up facing two small lances of three, maybe. But at least with things like where you know it's base destruction, it's usually going to be one lance before the base, then the base destruction at very low levels. Um, that's just a hint. Uh, embassy extraction. Once again, it's the same kind of idea. There's like usually one lance that's guarding the base, um, and then you just fight the lance and, and rescue the person, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you're fighting, if you want to do um, convoy ambushes, remember you're fighting eight units at once, rather than you know, like I said, with um, deniable destruction, you're pulling four units away from the base, fighting four then fighting the four turrets, which turrets are generally easy to kill um, in the beginning parts of the game. And um, it's a, just a lot easier to pull off those missions. Um, so you can, rather than taking salvage, you can take money if you find yourself low on money. Uh, the salvage usually on those missions isn't that great anyway, especially at half a skull, but it's enough to start getting some parts. Um, so yeah, that's that's my suggestion and if you find that you're getting a really low chance to hit um, one of the things you can try and avoid is sprinting all the time if you sprint all the time it's going to be difficult more difficult to hit than if you just walk um, it makes you easier to hit but if you're finishing your turn in trees or something like that you're going to make up for it um, yeah so that's about it and that's the end of this uh, rogue tech short if you like it uh, please leave a like and um, Feel free to subscribe. Thanks.